today's Linux -y shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. The 11 inch MacBook Air. Wait, 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 don't click off yet. The good old 11 inch MacBook Air gets a lot of crap as the cheap entry level throwaway Mac, but I think that's undeserved. And this is actually one of my favorite computers. It's small, sleek, and sturdy. And although Apple abandoned it years ago, it'll make a heck of a cool Linux machine. So today, let's see if we can breathe new life into this lovely little machine by replacing the internal battery, upgrading the SSD, and installing the latest version of Ubuntu Linux. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy going to great lengths to eke out more usable life out of your favorite old computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. For a long time, the 11-inch MacBook Air was the entry-level Apple laptop. Released in 2010 to complement the existing 13-inch Air, the base specs were pretty paltry, even for the time. $999 got you a 64-gig SSD and 2 gigs of non-upgradable RAM paired with a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Core Duo. But if you spend an extra hundred or so dollars, things got a little more interesting. Four gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and when you pair that with a battery that lasts for five or more hours and a honestly beautiful display, wake up. All in this incredibly small form factor, you actually have quite the perfect road warrior. My 11 inch MacBook Air here is the mid 2012 base model with four gigs of RAM and a dual core i5. And I bought it because, well, it was dirt cheap. And I wanted a travel laptop that was small, had good battery, and uh, wouldn't care too much if it got beat up or lost. I think I paid a hundred bucks for this thing like last year. But, well, turns out I absolutely adore this thing. In fact, I just flew down to VCF Southwest with this thing. Not only did it last all flight watching old Doctor Who episodes, but it kept my libretto running during the show. And well, that really inspired me to show this air some love now that I'm back home with the new battery because this one only seems to last about three hours and a brand new 256 gigabyte OWC SSD because 64 gigs ain't cutting it. And while we're at it, I'm going to satisfy my curiosity by running some benchmarks between Catalina here and Ubuntu to see if we take any performance hits or make any gains by switching to a modern Linux. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website dedicated to the misunderstood, wonderful 11-inch MacBook Air. I could build it in minutes with Squarespace's new next-generation Fluid Engine, which features powerful drag-and-drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com actionretro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code ACTIONRETRO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So after a quick gander at iFixit, turns out this thing is pretty easy to work on. And uh, yeah, can you tell this is well-loved? <laughs> Been collecting stickers on here. Anyway, a couple tiny screws of some sort. And there we go, the tiny wonder that is the 11 inch MacBook Air. We've got our SSD here, our big old battery here, and I was surprised to learn it is not in fact glued in place. It is screwed in place and can come off quite easily. Disconnect the battery connector there.
and look at that comes right out amazing and while we're at it we'll pop the ssd out goodbye 64 gigs in with 250 now this is a special connector here kind of i think proprietary for apple even though it's nothing special about the drive itself as far as i know apple just wanted to be apple and do apple things And now our brand new uh, no-name Amazon battery, which hopefully is okay. But it does claim to be 35 watt hours, which is the same as the original. Easy peasy. And there we go. All right, well, let's see if she powers on. Huzzah! Okay, so what we need to do here, we're supposed to power cycle the battery, so fully charge it and then fully discharge it down to absolute zero so that we get the best possible battery runtime out of this thing. So what I think I'm going to do is install macOS 1015 Catalina, the last officially supported macOS on this 5.1 MacBook Air. But yeah, I'm going to do this install, charge it up, discharge it overnight, and we'll jump cut to hopefully a working system with a very nice battery. Okay, so I've run this through two charge and discharge cycles using a very rigorous and controlled, totally normal battery rundown algorithm. Under which it seemed to last about four hours at least, so that's an improvement. And uh, yeah, works just fine. Uh, Mac OS Catalina installed just fine on this 250 gig SSD. And I've run Geekbench benchmarks, and we got a score of 535 single core, 1118 multi core. But, you know, this isn't the benchmark that I'm super concerned with. You know which benchmarks I'm really after. We're gonna try to run the most modern Minecraft, 1.20.1, and see what kind of frame rates we get. Not too shabby. All right, we're still loading into the world, but we're already getting like 15 to 20 frames per second. Yeah, now hitting 20 frames per second, feeling pretty smooth. Yeah, I'm gonna call this 17 frames per second. That's the number I've seen the most. Let's try something a little bit different. This is Classic Cube. How oh, stupid security system preferences. This is Classic Cube. It is a re-implementation of classic Minecraft in C++, which means it runs super fast, even on extremely limited machines. All right, I'm gonna to try to connect to the server I have running, uh, which is a public server, by the way. And yeah, there is a lot of wacky stuff built in here, which is gonna make this a little more taxing. Actually, I'm still hitting 59 frames per second. Just look at all this wild stuff people have built. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. All right, let's bring this thing into the modern day and install Ubuntu 2304. And of course, installing Ubuntu from a USB stick on an Intel Mac like this is super easy. You just hold down option at startup with the USB drive with the installer connected and it will come up as EFI boot on this lovely little gray screen. And selecting that will take us right into the installer. So we're in GNU Grub here. We can do try or install Ubuntu and everything on this machine should be supported out of the box, no issues. 
Okay, so we're booted into the live environment and it did take quite a long time to boot. And uh, yeah, this is actually the second system problem detected I've seen, but I'm just clicking ignore and we're just going to install Ubuntu and give it a fair shake once it's actually installed on the drive. You know, we can chalk that up to being in the live environment. Hopefully, we'll find out together. And again, we are installing the full fat Ubuntu with GNOME 3 desktop because honestly, I really like GNOME 3. And yeah, you can call me like a Linux normie or something, but I've installed and used plenty of other Linuxes over the years, like Arch Linux, Manjaro, Debian, OpenSUSE, and you know, every distro under the sun. But I always come back to Ubuntu because generally it just works. And actually I don't think it sees the hard drive. Interesting. And I'm gonna reinitialize the disk here and then just format it as extended four. All right, now we definitely do see the drive, so let's go. All right, I've set up my name, a nice secure password, dark theme, of course, and we're installing. So I'll do a jump cut to when this is fully installed or if it fails. Okay, well apparently these cheapo Micro Center branded USB sticks from Amazon are garbage. Because I reflashed the image onto one of these PNY bad boys and it installed just fine. None of those issues. So yeah, here we go. Ubuntu 2304 installed and ready to use. Okay, so I actually decided to live with this computer for about a day after the Ubuntu install, just to see if there were any more issues like we saw with the live USB image on that Micro Center USB drive, and there were none. I did tons of stuff on this computer today, web browsing, a little bit of light development work. I updated my bitbang.social Mastodon instance. I watched a bunch of YouTube and didn't have a single problem with this thing and it seems to work great. And specifically, all of the functions work. So keyboard brightness works as expected, screen brightness works as expected, sound works, trackpad works wonderfully and feels great. This thing is awesome. <laughs> and even better, it feels smooth as all get out. I mean, my favorite way to use GNOME 3 is hit the command key and type in something to open it. And that works great. It's so smooth. Even the animations, I'm really surprised at how smooth they are. In any event, I took some Geekbench benchmarks and boy was I surprised. This thing under Linux scores significantly higher in both benchmarks, single core and obviously multi-core. Uh, check it out. We scored 535 single core on Mac OS Catalina and 598 under Ubuntu 2304. You know, a modern up-to-date operating system. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm... I'm shocked. Honestly, I thought it was going to score lower because of more overhead. Nope. These numerical benchmarks, they're good, but you know what we're going to test next. All right, here we are in a similar biome to before, and it feels pretty smooth. Let's see what our frames per second are. Oh, 27 standing still. Look at that, we're well above 20. Yeah, walking around, we were hitting 24 frames per second, down to the teens now as some of the world loads in. Wow, 33 standing still. 22, 25 walking around. This is significantly more frames per second. Let me give it some more sane settings for the uh, 
level of computer we have here. <laughs> All right, graphics fast, render distance down a little bit. Smooth lighting off. Clouds fast. We don't want it to look terrible. Now let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, it already feels much smoother. Hey bunnies. Hello. Pet the bunny. Oh, he doesn't like the pets. All right, let's see here. What's our frame rate? Holy cow, 52 frames per second standing still. Oh my God, we're in the high 30s. It is 40 frames per second, 36, not dipping below. Okay, when I started to do stuff, it dipped into the 20s, but still, this is a way better than expected frame rate for the level of computer we have here, honestly. But yeah, let's see how fast Classic Cube runs. Okay, loaded back into the server, and surprisingly, we are getting the exact same frames per second. 59, which is a little exact to be a coincidence. So I don't know if this is trying to lock FPS at 60, perhaps. I don't see anything. Look at all this cool stuff that people built. Here, let me turn the fog off. And uh, let's fly up here. <laughs> Y2K. Look at this. The Wolfenstein 3D logo. That looks freaking incredible. Holy cow. Whoever did that, thank you. As you know, my favorite game. There's even stuff underground. <laughs> Look, I can go through this uh, giant ethernet port and get down here where everyone has signed their name. Or at least a lot of people have. What a cool collaborative work of art. <laughs> Anyway, I love this MacBook Air. And wow, would you look at that? We were actually surprised by a positive result for once. I'm really surprised that putting the latest version of Ubuntu on here performs better than macOS Catalina, which, you know, was designed for this machine. But I mean, modern macOS is kind of bloated and Ubuntu has become a lot less bloated over the years. So, yeah, I guess we shouldn't be that surprised. Good job, Linux. And I checked eBay. You can still find these things for around $100 or so. But in any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camilo Noseda, Chris Algreta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George F. Rosansky, Greg Rutke, Harris Brody, James Fryman, Jason Papaz, Jesse Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.